We've got some breaking news. Three British men who are being held in Taliban custody. They include so-called danger tourist Miles Rutledge. He's built up a social media following, visiting dangerous places. Here in the UK, the Foreign Office says it's working hard to get in touch with three British men who have been detained by Taliban secret police. Lord Miles, the last great British explorer and esteemed autistic man, is back in Afghanistan after eight months in Taliban intelligence custody against all common sense. He wants to buy up $40,000 of Afghanistan government merch to resell to other autists online. Commencing his journey by obtaining the treasures in Kabul, he must traverse Afghanistan to then cross the Torkham land border into Pakistan. There he will embark on a smuggling boat from Karachi to Oman, all the while concealing his precious Taliban artifacts from Pakistani intelligence. This video documents his entire smuggling journey. You don't want to miss this. Oh, hello my friend. <laughs> We're just in a taxi heading towards the market to buy some stuff to resell some excellent treasure you can't get anywhere else. Now, we've got a famous saying in Afghanistan which is Mushkin Nishta. Mushkin Nishta needs no problem. You say it regardless if you've got a problem or not. Especially if you've actually got a problem. You know, when I was in the prison, in the jail, I would have the Taliban come up to me and go, Miles, what do you need? You know, do you want some books? Do you want some ginseng, some energy drinks? What do you need? And I go, nah, Mushkin Nishta. And they just start laughing because no matter what happens in Afghanistan, no matter what struggles you go through, through, every Afghan will just go Mushkin Nishta, no problem. So as we wait for this traffic jam, regardless if it turns into tomorrow or a week, Mushkin Nishta. No, no, I don't want to, I don't, no, 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 I'm not, this kid won't leave me alone. I, I'm sorry, I don't want to buy your bag. No, no, he's following me for a while, I'm sorry. This kid is persistent, isn't he? I'm just going to, Struggles of a white man, right? It's the most important thing for me in Afghanistan. The most precious commodity is toilet paper in general. Thank you, my friend. I just went to the market where you put an order in. Now, they don't want it on camera, which is respectable. They were kind of shocked for bulk of this order, especially coming from a white Western dude. But they had no problem with business. We handed over a decent chunk of money. Now, I'm not going to say how much, not because I'm reselling to you guys, but just because in general, I think I overpaid. But I'm not the best negotiator, especially when I don't know the language. Lick, lick, pashtu. Very little. Let's go, guys. We're going to show you the hall in the guest house. So this man here has been to England a few times on a truck though and he got deported back. Oh you devious man. <laughs> back at the Afghanistan guest house at the moment and you know what we've got all the treasures. We've got these very nice rugs right here. The authentic new Afghanistan government shoes. A bunch of military patches. This is for their version of the MI6 or the CIA, the GDI. So I have got a license to buy and sell these otherwise oh, they'll raise some questions. I promise you I'm not building an army abroad. Look over here too. I've got some new Afghanistan flags right now. We've got these headbands as well, and we've got some of these pins. And all the people that support me on my Patreon, I've got here some postcards. So links in the description if you want to support me. And my favorite thing right here, I didn't order this, it was just thrown in. And the gentleman was very kind. So I think I've been recruited, guys, as a commander. But you know what worries me, guys? If we go to the Pakistan border, are we gonna look at this stuff and think, ah, geez, man, this is a little bit, Suspicious, a little bit dodgy. If this gets confiscated, I am screwed. I'm funding this travel by selling a bunch of treasures on this trip. I've got the license for Afghanistan, but I'm just gonna wing it in Pakistan. So there's only one way to find out. I guess tomorrow we go ahead to the Pakistan border. We're gonna drive for several hours on a little bumpy road and we're gonna see what they say, but I'm sure Mushkin Nishta, no problem. What can go wrong, right? No, what do you mean? What do you this is really bad. It's all gone to crap, day two. We were meant to have a car. We were meant to buy a car and drive all the way. We were meant to go in a car of our own. But my contact in Afghanistan says, We tried to get you the car, uh, but the Taliban asked for a permit because- Another know, permit. And uh, uh, it will take many months. Months, uh, ridiculous. do that now, so very sorry. I have no idea what we can do, guys. We've got no way to transport all that merchandise we've got. Look at it, it's thousands of dollars worth of merchandise. And to be fair, for me, if sold correctly, it'd be sold for $40,000. This is a big problem. I planned this for weeks. Weeks. I think we have to hitchhike, dude. I think we have to hitchhike. I know a guy that can take me all the way through Afghanistan. That's fine. Oh, so I'm really my friend. Listen, I've got a problem. I've got a major, major problem. Is there any way you can... Thank you. He says he's at my service. Good man. Thank you, dude. I love you. No homo, but I love you. Mm -hmm. 
Mom, mom. Mm. You gotta get up. Mm. We have to do the video. An adventure? We have to do an adventure? One second. Uh, maybe five more minutes. Come on, we gotta go. Okay, okay. I'm ready, let's do this. Got insane drip, let's go to Pakistan. Oh, Holly. You gonna you gonna execute me? Banana? Yeah, yeah. No, Sabah? No, 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 no. I'll, I'll pay you, I'll pay you. No, Sabah. We'll do it next time. I'll say goodbye, my friend. I'm going to Pakistan. Pakistan. Ooh, ooh. This we need, because Pakistani food. Well, we're just in the streets of Gabor at the moment, dealing with a Serb traffic, as you can see right here. As we... So we're in Jalalabad and we've got a $12 a night hotel. Oh, we got a window, a lovely view. Bars of a window and you think, okay, that's, that's for security, I guess. We've also got a TV, which only picks up Uzbekistan and Pakistan channels. So, you know, just my favorite things to watch, to be fair. We've got a bathroom. My camera belt. Sorry guys, I know we talk about terrorism in Afghanistan, but it seemed like my cameraman just dropped a bomb in there. My tuff is hurting like a bitch. I guess I'm gonna get my tuff pulled out in Afghanistan. Let's go guys. It's pictures of happy people. This must be it. So if it's actually very modern. We've got a bit of a crowd behind us guys. Hello. Hi. How are you? <laughs> I think they all want to see me scream in pain. I've always had problems with wisdom teeth and I don't want the British stereotype of having bad teeth. Oh my God, bro. Oh, hell no. Laughing. He's a very big. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's big. Yeah, very big. Yeah. Good riddance. Even my dentist in England. Actually, better. More skin this day. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I want it back. <laughs> you want it back? Yeah, we'll put it back in. <laughs> How much money is this? No, no. I can't. No, no, no. I can't pay just five, six dollars. I must pay. More skin this day. Thank you, my friend. Banana. Banana. It was surprisingly good. I don't know what the NHS is playing at, but they're charging 10 times the prices and they have 10 times less service. But right now in Jalalabad, we're gonna go all the way to Torkham. And I think I'm gonna go to the border and they're gonna look at me, see that I've got something in my mouth, which is a big wad of uh, cotton balls. And they're gonna think I'm smuggling an emerald or something. So let's go get a taxi, guys. Let's go all the way to Torkham, to Pakistan. And to be fair, I fancy this cheeseburger that I'm gonna get. There's a McDonald's there, you know. I'm not a fan of soy, I'm not a fan of American slop, but you know, it's nice once in a while. But also guys, I'm sounding a little funny. My lips are going numb. When I go to the border guards, you're going to think this guy is mentally special. I'm going to be real with you guys. Even though I have clearance from my tally bros to buy and export this merchandise, I do not have permission from the Pakistani government to import anything. I do not have an import license. So I'm going to the border on a whim with $40,000 worth of Taliban merch to resell to neighboring Pakistan, which hates the Taliban in general. So let's see how this goes, guys. What can go wrong? Oh, my loyal viewers, when I crossed the land border, the Taliban were absolutely chill and very kind. We had a good laugh, but on the Pakistan side, it was a different story. The Pakistanis took our camera, deleted some footage, and they told us not to talk about a woman we saw getting beaten with a stick by Pakistani immigration, all because she forgot some documents. I'm going to talk about it anyway. There was a corridor of mesh wire and corrugated metal. I saw child smugglers pay off Pakistani guards to sneak in into the Afghanistan side. People grabbing at my pockets trying to get money. We were given purple liquid in our mouth as a polio treatment. Pakistani immigration intelligence questioned us but never inspected our luggage, thank god. We wrapped our luggage with several layers of plastic which they couldn't be bothered to unwrap. Seeing on the x-ray machine that it wasn't a bomb or guns or drugs, they let us through into Pakistan. Officially a talk right at the top at the moment. And if you have a look over here, wow, it's magnificent, isn't it? And you've got this winding road that goes all the way 
to Afghanistan. Now this is the choke point for most empires too. This is where the British came through hundreds of years ago. This is where Genghis Khan conquered as well. Alexander the Great went around here. Yeah, so this is the last village of Pakistan. Up there? Yeah, wow. Yeah, on top. Oh wow. So there's uh, three to four hundred families living mm. here. Lost village? We found it. Lost village. Easy, Our I found it. We, we found it. Straight there. Our Khan <laughs> so this guy right here? It's a fed. He was assigned to us after our interview with Pakistani intelligence. He pretends he doesn't speak English and he's here to see if we are up to anything dodgy or if we're just normal everyday YouTubers and that's exactly what we're pretending to be until we can throw him off. You got trucks that are waiting a little while. You saw people sleeping underneath the trucks just because they're like, yeah, I've got a few hours to waste. I want to take a nap, which I get to be fair. If you're on the grind, might as well relax a little bit. To the next rest stop, McDonald's. <laughs> So guys, we've got a private escort right here. We've got the police giving us a frontline passage through the traffic for safety in Bashar because there are members of the TTP, which is a terrorist organization where it's a bunch of Afghans basically who believe that Bashar, this area belongs to them. So I'm not gonna weigh in on that. They classify as a terrorist organization. It's a big problem in Bashar. So we've got the police giving us an escort, which is very lovely of them. After weeks of Afghan bread, our boy Lord Miles finally gets his American cancerous soy slop at McDonald's. Little does he know that this might be his last meal. Guys, he's in the hole. Let me out. <laughs> Over. Surprise! Oh, you guys! Brother Miles, we wanted to surprise you. We're so back! Authentic Taliban shoes at a reasonable price? Originally from Afghanistan? Wow! Thanks, Taliban! And if you want authentic Afghanistan merch, go to my store. Link in the description, guys. Beautiful! Miles did get kidnapped in Lahore, but only to do a podcast. I wouldn't mind living in America. It's a great place for tax fraud. Speaking of islands, when's Epstein Island on the agenda? I really went there as a child. And I went there. <laughs> yeah. How was Prince Andrew? Yeah, he's pretty wholesome to be fair. He would say, oh dear, oh bother, by bits. When he was finished, he would always say splendid. So that, <laughs> that was rather good. Oh right, guys, so it's the next day and I'm quite a sleepy fella. So we go head into a TV studio in Pakistan, Lahore. And we're going to film a TV show, Crapping on India, which honestly is something I like to do anyway. Uh, okay. My co-anchor, Ali Abbas. Pleasure yeah. to meet you, my Yours. friend. How are you? Very good. Very nice good. to meet you too. You've got a beautiful setup here. Thank you so much. Some good work. So Welcome to New York, Pakistan. I usually sit a lot more than eight hours a day, but I'm not working at all. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking news today in India, in Lahore. We've had reports that Pakistani ISI have taken over Mumbai. What? Once... Oh! India has been destroyed, guys. Very good. Why you did not like India? Oh, it was not good. Well, I don't like the caste system. They oppress different types of people, which isn't good to see. There's an area called the Centralese. The Centralese people are oppressed in India, so they don't even have electricity, running water, and the Indian government haven't visited them since the 90s. Miles, being the retard that he is, came across a rather peculiar listing for a hotel in Karachi. On the listing's images, it shows a copy of the famous Mona Lisa painting. Miles, being rather silly, has mistaken this copy for the actual one and thinks buying this painting will solve his $600,000 of unpaid credit card debt. Salam alaikum guys. So we have the Sea View Hotel right here. Now, I don't see a view and also I don't see the sea. Save that a few times. But we're gonna go inside and we're gonna check out. We're gonna find the mysterious Mona Lisa. Now, I heard the Mona Lisa is actually worth a lot of money, maybe even a few hundred dollars. So let's go inside and have a look. Salam alaikum, my friends. I like the gun, it's good. Oh, may I? Um, Very nice. Oh. Yeah, Pakistan and India. <laughs> Finish. <laughs> oh, there she is, guys. There she is. It's real, by the way. It's worth a lot of money. We'll take it to England and sell it to rich people. I see this painting right here. Yeah. Is it the original? Yeah, I know. It is the original. Oh, perfect. I want to buy it. How much? It will cost you around $100. $100. I think we can make that happen for the original. That's a steal. Let's see. Put the camera down. We're going to. We're going to exchange some money. Amazing. He's very happy. He's a happy man for $100. Can I grab this painting? Okay, alarms won't go off, right? There'll be no alarms. Sorry? Oh, now we'll be fine. Let's see. Let's grab this. Thank you. 
This is beautiful, incredible. I just want to say thank you guys. This amazing painting. Good man. And all these men too. <laughs> Good man. We're going to take this to our room. This is going to go all the way to England. Oh, I can't believe Leonardo DiCaprio got this and painted it whilst on the Titanic. And this is what he floated on in that documentary Titanic. They're laughing because they realise what a great deal we got and they're really happy for us. They respect us 100%. She's looking a little bit goofy, isn't she? Well, she's kind of got like, she looks Chinese almost. With infant alcohol syndrome. And she's dressed modestly. She looks like a Romanian basically. Got some Pakistani food. All of this was about three pounds. I'm gonna do a little food review. This looks fresh, this looks good guys. So I'm just gonna slide this in. Look at that, it keeps form too. It's so molded together. Remind me never go to one of these countries again. We're gonna get home. Hey guys, I'm gonna be down to earth for you and let you in with a little secret. Huh? Not everyone can go around the world from those dangerous countries and collect treasures just like me. The good news is I have a way for you to make money at home, anywhere in the world, whilst you're watching me do these insane adventures. ResellCalendar.com, your number one source of resale news. Every time something is in demand and is about to go up for sale, Resell Canada notifies you so you can buy and flip it on the aftermarket for a nice profit. ResellCalendar.com slash Lord Miles. There's been some crazy stuff being shared lately. Like this trading set that retailed for $50 and is selling on eBay for over $5,000. Or this gold coin that released at the US Mint for only $2,600 and is reselling for almost $20,000. So there's never been a better time to become a dirty scalper. ResellCalendar.com slash Lord Miles. You can sign up for her newsletter completely for free and use them because trust me, you do not want to be doing what I'm doing for a living to make money. I'd rather be at home using resale candor just like you. No, I'm, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. No, I, I won't fall for scams. I'm sorry. To avoid getting his merch seized at an airport in Pakistan, Miles must now get on a smuggling boat from Karachi to Oman. He does get interviewed by Pakistan intelligence, but he doesn't get searched because Miles distracted them with a conversation about cricket and talking shit about India. Where are you from? England, my friend. England? England. Both? Yes. Both Australia, Australia and England, Australia. yes. He's very good at cricket. Man. Very good I hope you get all of Kashmir from Pakistan, nay no, India. Arshan! <laughs> Arshan! I think mean, there's a problem, yeah, come maybe. Come on, come on. I tell the person, yes. he can guide you the way of the board. Oh, thank you. Okay. The picture, Mona Lisa. Yes, yes, it's real. Yeah. Indian girl is like, well. Now that Pakistani counter-terrorism police and intelligence are mandated to follow Miles until he leaves the city, he must now pretend to be a normal cringe travel YouTuber. Hey kid, how are you doing? Oh Good to meet you, my friend. Good to meet you too. Hey, oh, we got the Mona Lisa here, guys. Oh, she's good. Oh. Let's give her a first class seat, actually. So all that stuff is already preloaded on, thank God, which means it didn't get searched or anything. So these smaller boats, just like over there, and maybe we can wave to them. They're waving back. Oh. So those gentlemen are also going to Oman or Dubai. They say they're fishing boats, but they have 50 people on them, and they're certainly not going anywhere else. Looks like we've made it, guys. We're so bad, guys. There's quite a few people here. Women, children, some babies. And there's a few men too, but it's just me, white man vibing. This is what the British Empire was about. <sighs> Muscat was meant to be the fish line. Something went terribly wrong. When we got off a boat, we saw a taxi and we said, how much to this hotel over here? And he said, you know, it's gonna be this much price. And I was like, yeah, no, very expensive. We got out of a taxi and we went straight for bus. In that taxi, I left behind my mobile. My mobile has all my credit cards and all my debit cards and business cards and bank cards on it. Because we don't know anything about the taxi, we can't contact the gentleman. We went back to the McDonald's and asked about the CCTV. And unfortunately, it's a grainy black and white mess. And because of that, we had no money. I think we had like 200 rupees in Pakistani money, which might as well be V-Bucks. And we'd be dragging all our stuff from a small port in Oman for about an hour and a half, two hours to the hotel that we've just arrived at. So I went through denial, regret, anger, to acceptance. At least we still got this priceless piece of art 
I wonder where my phone is right now. There's probably a Somalian right there just picking through all the pins or something, trying to guess it. It's also 2681. If you're watching this Somalian man, you know, you deserve it. Defeated and blow drying his underwear, Miles gets an unexpected call. We don't need money. I will send you a, I'll send you a bag. Thank you, man. Okay, thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Uh, yes! Oh, I got my phone back. Oh, thank God. We're so back, guys. We're so back. Against all odds, Miles made it to the Oman airport with no problems. He's now heading back to England. If you would like a piece of the Taliban, go to Miles's Kofi store. Until next video in three weeks, fellow adventurers. She's the original. I feel like I'm in Home Alone, I'm Kevin, you know, in an airport, but you know, instead of leaving my child behind, I've left my self-dignity and money. I tell myself sometimes from trip to trip, especially you know, during my detention with the Taliban for eight months, I'm gonna stop doing this, I'm gonna go back to a normal, high-paying job with a lot of stability. But we all know, guys, that I'm certainly not gonna stop doing this. If anything, I'm just getting started. Thank you for watching this video. Like and subscribe, and please, please download the affiliate link for our sponsor. They offer an excellent service. I actually do recommend them. I would not recommend a sponsor I haven't used myself and don't personally like. And also, I would like to say thank you to all of my patrons now on the screen scrolling past. You guys are amazing in the group chat. If you guys don't know, donate a few dollars to me each month and you get postcards sent to you in exclusive group chat and a Discord server. I talk there almost daily, especially when I'm not on a trip, I'm constantly on there and we made a close community of friends. I want to say thank you very much for everyone who's donated to me. It does make a world of difference. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.